Now, what I want to do now as a, as, a, as a closure is to then return to individual behavior. So I've talked a lot about policies, how to affect people, uh, but I, I'm always in this area interested in knowing and understanding individual behavior and why we're doing the way we're doing. So I just wanted to close very quickly uh, by by thinking a little bit and talking a little bit about why are there so big differences in, in the use of antibiotics in the world? Even comparing pretty similar countries, we can see pretty big differences in the use of antibiotics. And I just listed four, four reasons here for why that, that could be the case. Uh, I'm sure if we think about it, we can come up with a number of them. The first and foremost explanation for the use of antibiotics is most likely income. But we also know that even with, with countries that have similar levels of income, there could be pretty big differences in the use of antibiotics, which could be differences in terms of what policies we have in, in place, what the institutions are, if there is corruption, but also maybe norms that people adhere to. And what I did in a study together with some colleagues, well, actually with Gunnar that you, that you saw, saw, saw uh, previous uh, hour, was to think and actually in, in, a, in a very simple way, just ask people how they would behave under a certain setting. So we did a survey, a uh, survey-based study to a random sample of, of sweets. And we were simply interested in knowing who is willing to voluntarily abstain from taking antibiotics. And this is not for a deadly disease. Uh, it's just to, to be sick for a few more days, suffer a little bit, but not take antibiotics. We had a number of questions on the use of antibiotics. We had a number of questions on their, 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 their uh, previous use. We have a number of questions on trust in society, trust in the healthcare sector, uh, and of course, socioeconomic characteristics. And this was the scenario or the vignette question that we asked all people. For a number of bacterial infections, for example, tonsillitis, we know that the use of antibiotics will quicken your recovery. If you do not take antibiotics, you will continue to be ill for several additional days. How willing or unwilling are you to abstain from using antibiotics when possible, even if it means that you will be sick for some extra days? So it's basically asking people, are you willing to voluntarily abstain from taking antibiotics, suffering a little bit, uh, but be a good guy or girl? And then we ask the same people, what do you think others would do? Okay, same vignette question, but how do you think others would do? And these are the distribution of the answers uh, to these two questions. So when answering for themselves, 5% saying, no, 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 I'm not going to be willing to, to, to abstain from taking my antibiotics. And 30% are saying, I'm very willing to abstain from taking antibiotics. Okay. While if we ask them, well, what do you think others would do? Then they're saying, no, 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 2% would be very willing to abstain from taking antibiotics, uh, uh, while 12% would be very unwilling to take antibiotics. So as you see, it, that's the first interesting result. It's a pretty, big, big, pretty big difference between what I think I, I would do and what I think that Anne would do. I'm a much better person than Anne, so I would abstain, but she would not, right? That would be the general impression people would have. This is usually what you find in many studies, and in a way, I would say that maybe this is a more reliable way, a more reliable prediction of what people would actually do. Uh, but interestingly enough as well, it's a pretty big correlation between these two. So if I'm very willing to take antibiotics, it's more likely that I think that other people are at least fairly willing to, to, to abstain from taking antibiotics. Now, we're not super interested in the, in, the, in the distribution here of responses. Instead, what we're interested in seeing is, can we explain the distribution here? Can we, who is very unwilling and who is very willing? Are there factors? Are there individual characteristics? Are there past behavior? What factors can explain what they respond here? That's our main interest. 
When it comes to the individual characteristics, characteristics there's essentially nothing that correlates with this. Not gender, not income, not where they live, not their education. Basically, nothing explains where they end up in this response. However, their previous experiences have a pretty big impact on where they end up here. Those with the worst health status, those that have recently taken antibiotics, those that have stated being denied to take antibiotics in the, uh, uh, in the past, those that have a low level of concern about resistance, etc., are all associated with a lower willingness to, uh, 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 to abstain. It's all sort of past behavior and, and knowledge information correlate with this behavior. So what this is suggesting is that, well, maybe there are ways to affect people to increase their, their voluntary willingness to abstain, actually, by targeting on these experiences and knowledges. While, and this is more from a social science point of view, we were also interested in knowing, well, does the trust uh, 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 and expectation about others correlate with this? And when it comes to trust in society, it had no effect. When it comes to expectation about what others are doing, it had a pretty big effect on, on where they end up on this, on this distribution. So, explaining the variation here, yes, we can do that, but we cannot do it with individual characteristics. We can do it with expectation of what the others are doing and their past experience. 